Hi guys and welcome to Stuff You Should Buy. This is Harry and today we'll be looking at the TomTom Go 600. Apparently it's the latest navigation uh, device that I could find. Um, I was having a look at some different ones like Navman and whatever the other, there's a few other ones but I can't remember their names. But anyway, apparently this one is the best if you need it and this is really specifically what I needed it for. Uh, when you're traveling, it gives you the speed limit, as all of them do, but you can set it. So if you're going over the speed limit, you um, it, it'll buzz. It'll it'll beep. Apparently some of the other ones don't, like the Navman, it just sort of goes red and pops up. So this is going to be an unboxing anyway. I'll get to it. Uh, it'll be an unboxing, and then we'll go through some of the features after it. Now, as you can see here, $299. Not sure if you can, but if you can, um, that's what I did not pay for it. <laughs> if that makes sense, um, I got it ten dollars cheaper. No, it's not too great, is it? But I also got three years warranty with it. Now the reason, and let's just do the unboxing while I talk. The reason I got this is I've received a couple of um, speeding fines. Now it was only a couple of k's over. I think it was about three or four k, four k's. I was four k's over. But um, the thing here is that. You know they cost money and how many fines are you going to keep getting and uh, i thought to myself this is for work i'll claim it on tax and at least you know it'll hopefully save me getting any further fines it's got some cool features um as i said we'll just unbox it now and then we'll go through more later um i haven't unboxed this before so it's a first time actually have a look at the back here as well so you can see just it gives you a little explanation of what's what um, I think this is sort of saying that if there's traffic accident, it'll let you know. That's interesting and give you an alternative route. It's also got sort of a, you know, like a, like a smartphone these days, you can pinch and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, um, like I said, I'll go through some of the features after we've unboxed it and 3D view and yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> all right. So let's open it up. Um, there you go. So that's what you sort of get there. It's. Not much air, and it's pretty sort of simple, isn't it? Um, now I'll just sort of a little groove here so we can get her out. Seems to be pretty tight in, so oh, not coming out. There we are. Okay, uh, fairly heavy to tell you the truth. It's it's not very light. Um, let's have a look at what else is in the box. And as I said, we'll go through more of the features and whatever else there is because this is all new to me as well so I'm guessing some paperwork here that tells you a bit about it uh, what have we got here okay so you've got a charger here I'll just tip that over so you can see this is the bit that I'm assuming sort of the suction cup that goes up against the window and your cable comes with it so Okay guys, so what I've done here is I've, I've just laid it all out nice and neat so we can run over uh, all the bits in a sort of simple and easier way because it was sort of getting messy taking it all out of the box. So we've got the cable here and we've got USB. Now I'll just undo that to show you that one side goes to your computer okay, and the other side um, or goes to your computer or it goes to this lighter that they've given you. So you plug that in and then it sort of pretty much goes into the lighter of your car uh, for power and it runs it. Now to update the software or firmware, um, you would pretty much just plug that bit into the computer. The other side, micro USB, I do believe so. Not mini, mini is different. Yeah, micro USB. So. And basically that uh, plugs into this bit. Okay, and I'll just bring that a bit closer and clean it up. So I'm manually zooming here. So now I'm behind the camera, so I'm trying to do this <laughs> from being behind the camera. Let me see. Uh, okay, so that just sort of pops in there like that. And then this bit here sticks to your window now you, you would peel this off put it adjust it to where you want on the window and then by 
turning, it will lock pretty much. And that unlocks. And the way it connects to the device is you'll have some female connectors, or is it male? Female, I think it is. Sorry, guys, there, just get that in there. Female connectors, and they pretty much just sort of sit over the top. It just clicks in that easy. It's quite stable, pretty good. Uh, and I'll just bring it out a bit and clean it. There we go. So it, it, it sits pretty easy, and it, and it comes off relatively easy. The same way, it just sort of pops off like that. All right, so we seem to have a connection here for uh, USB as well. Sorry about the really bad focus here. Let's just try and clean this up. I'll get it right there. But that would just pretty much plug in like that, and there you go. So you can connect it straight away to the computer or to the power source. And I'll, I'll peel this off. I've always loved doing these kind of things, like the peeling, especially, you know, anything brand new you just peel off the wrap and that coming off there okay. and there we are nice and beautiful clear and nice okay and we're going to have a quick look at some of the features of the TomTom Tom 600 I'm just going to press the power button up here on the top Okay, so it's a little out of focus. I'll get it into focus in just a moment. Just power it up. I don't know if you heard that. There's like a tom tom sound when you turn it on. <laughs> now it's got some interesting things. While we're waiting, I might as well sort of go over them. Has it got a capacitive screen, which is good. Sort of like a well, it's not resistive, so you don't have to press really hard. So it's sort of like smartphones out there these days. Um, now, we'll just have a quick look. If you go here, you can tap this area. It'll bring you into the menu. So you've got the search, current route, voice control, uh, report, speed camera. And that's pretty cool. Depending on where you are, if you see a, a police officer or even just a third party we've got in Australia, a speed camera or camera operating vehicles you just sort of tap that and it oh, this is what would happen reporting speed camera and it gets sent into i guess a database and with enough people reporting it then sort of i guess comes up so you know you're able to um feed information to it sort of works like a community i guess my places meaning Places you've in, you've pre-put in, so that that you would use regularly. Um, this locates parking, petrol stations, and traffic and speed cameras, which is interesting. Now I'll just go back. We'll go into each one separately, so you can see what it looks like. So the search, and as you can see, I'm pressing pretty lightly. Now it's not too bad. The search um, it says enter an address name. Now some apparently uh, GPSs you you have to enter. Uh, a certain address or like the, the the suburb first and if you get it wrong it doesn't sort of load up I think this one's pretty free going so if we put say something like um, uh, two three four uh, see how it's sort of coming up with them there and we'll go back here and we'll say Burke Street. Now I'm doing this behind the camera, so bear with me. Now, it might not find it because I'm in the house and, oh, well, it's found its version of that. Now, I'm in the house, so the thing is, um, it's logging on to Sydney. I'm in Melbourne, so I've got to be out of the house and get it to log on So uh, to Melbourne. So it's, I think, gone by default. So it's probably not going to be very correct in that sense but that's what it looks like when you're doing a search um as you can see so we'll press some of these buttons here so you can sort of get an idea of what they do and what they look like and that brings up the keyboard and takes it away okay so we'll go out of that Oop. there we are um current route 
obviously I'm not on one voice control. Uh, I'm listening. A, uh, all commands. I don't know what that means. I haven't played around with the voice control much, but that's what it's pretty much like. I guess it's got all its shortcuts. We'll go back. And we've done reporting speed camera. My places. Let's have a look at that. Now, there won't be anything in here. It's got home, destination, and so forth. I haven't added anything here, but it allows you to add it in. Um, the one thing I was kind of hoping with this was that it would allow me to set the speed limit so it would beep. So say I was in a 60 kilometer zone or in America, I guess you guys 50 miles or 60 miles per hour. I could set it to say 59. So once it reaches, it would beep and it doesn't seem to have that. And that's the main feature I really wanted. I think it sort of tries to do it automatically. So it'll, it'll beep right on the dot. I wanted it to be able to do that before, like a couple of Ks before I reach it. Okay, parking. Let's just see what that brings up. That's saying low battery. Hopefully it won't run out on us. So that brings up all the parking areas around where you're located. Go back out. Try and get into this as quick as I can. Petrol stations, same sort of thing. Um, it will locate petrol stations as it did with the parking. Um, I'll pop out of that. Go back. And it's pretty smooth and easy going to touch, I have to admit. Um, and traffic and speed. Now, I'll show you this. This is where I thought I'd be able to uh, just connect my own. <laughs> now, it's trying to connect to my iPhone. Apparently, it connects to the iPhone. Um, I have already paired this so I can make sure it all sort of worked while we, we will while we were doing it, the recording so <laughs> tongue tied there but again once it connects it pretty much just says connected it doesn't do anything out of the ordinary here like i don't know what that is ah it's probably trying to connect so it's not okay what is that search phones delete it's not really doing anything we'll just go back All right, um, and sort of your settings here, I guess. Oh, we've jumped into that. Jumped ahead. So appearance. Okay, let's go back again. Trying to work this behind the camera while I'm filming, so it's a bit tricky. So appearance, you could change the, sort of the colors and what whatnot, brightness. You've got a theme here. Um, that's you know self-explanatory. Voices, you can choose female, male, from America, from England, and so forth. So if you choose a voice, it'll bring them all up here. Um, they're pretty cool. You've got from computer generated to sort of more human, human-based, human-like voices. Maps, Australia, New Zealand, that's what it's bringing up at the moment. Um, what else do we have? Okay, route planning. I haven't really looked into that too much, but I'm guessing it sort of tells you if you want to use ferries and toll roads and so forth. That's about it. And sounds and warnings. This is where I thought it would have it, but it's not. Warning type says it will give me a warning sound. You can adjust it so I can read out loud the warnings or have none, so it'll be quiet. And we'll just... Go back out of that. It seems to be a little bit slow in its response. It's not as quick as in sharp. Safety warnings. Let's have a look. Okay, so when speeding, always warn me. See how what I mean? It doesn't give you that option to uh, put in by how many Ks or anything like that. So it just says when speeding, always warn me. Uh, warn me about traffic jams, risk zones, and so forth. Um Speed camera warnings, obviously, always. Uh, mobile camera hotspots. Average speed zones. Okay, let's have a look here. Only when speeding or always. See, again, it's sort of speed enforcement zones. It seems to be just sort of like a standard. It doesn't 
traffic restriction cameras. It doesn't really give you an option to set a speed limit um, where it can warn you. So in my vehicle that I have in my car, it uh, gives me an option to be able to set where it beeps at what speed I'm running, um, traveling at. Uh, language, let you put in whatever you want, as in keyboards, different languages and so forth. Uh, we'll go back out of that. Country, Australia and New Zealand at this point. So, you know, set your time, units, so forth. It, it's all pretty sort of self-explanatory here, what you can see. Um, system, not really sure. Send information, battery settings, resetting the whole device, and so forth. And question mark, I don't know. Let's go into it and see. Guided tour, voice control. Okay, so you can either have a guided tour. This is voice control, how to use it. So I'm guessing it's just sort of a help section here finding out information so yeah it says that so that's pretty much about it guys i hope you liked the video i'll try and go back out all the way um if you have any other questions just uh post them in in the comment section i'll get back to you um if you like my video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't sorry i did my best and if you've if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and i throw up some more videos some more cool stuff showing different things that i get um and that's pretty much about it. I hope you like this review. It's of the uh, TomTom Tom, uh, 600, was it? I think, yeah, <laughs> Tom, 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 Tom 600. Um, but I'll just put it down here. Sorry. I uh, hope you like the review. This was of the TomTom Tom Go 600. There you go. It wasn't the TomTom Tom 600, the Go 600. And um, that's about it. As I said, you know, just... Post me a comment and I'll I'll get back to you if there's anything particular that you might want to know about it. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty much about it. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are.